is intended for responsible adults only. We advocate for the repeal of marijuana prohibition for adults. We discuss the science, culture, and controversy about America's marijuana laws. We do not advocate or encourage any illegal activity and advise all listeners to learn their state and federal marijuana laws by visiting normal.org, N-O-R-M-L dot org. Opinions and claims made by guests and advertisers of Normal Show Live are their own and do not necessarily reflect the philosophy and policies of Normal. Listener discretion is advised. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it, and it goes down smooth. Spanning the continent to bring you the truth about cannabis and marijuana law reform. I smoke pot and I like it a lot. From the promise of legalization. Uh, and I think that we need to rethink and repersonalize our marijuana laws. To the agony of prohibition. One major responsibility is to encourage people to use less drugs. The National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws presents... Normal Show Live, Marijuana Nation. Now, here's your host, Normal's Outreach Coordinator, Radical Russ Belleville. Good afternoon, Tokers and Tokets. It is Monday, October 17th, 2011, and it's got to be 420 somewhere in the world. Thanks for joining us on a very exciting Monday here. All sorts of breaking news to bring to you on today's show. Let's get right to it by introducing, from our virtual studios in beautiful Grastoria, Oregon, the lovely Cannabis Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Hello, Russ. Oh, my goodness. You're not plugged in again. we got to fix that. There. We'll be able to hear you better when you're plugged in. Excellent. Uh, how's it going, Russ? Happy I, Monday. Happy Monday to you. I got too many computers, too much stuff to plug in, but on the bright side, all three of my football teams won this weekend. That's right. Green Bay Packers, the only undefeated 6 0 team. The Boise State Broncos, one of 10 undefeated college football teams. And in high school football <laughs> news, my Nampa High School Bulldogs defeated arch rival Caldwell 72 to 22. Wow. <laughs> so, now, did. Did you play football in high school, Russ? I, I don't know. That. I did not play football. I was in band. I was the drum major. I was leading them uh, on. Of course. That makes so much sense. <laughs> well, I when I was a young man, I, I had a choice between playing music or playing football. And my father said, well, go find old football players and old musicians and ask them what their lives are like. I couldn't find any old football players, so uh, <laughs> I picked musician. Uh, it turned out better for my knees, I'll tell you that much. Uh, all right, let's let's get to the news here. We got all sorts of serious stuff to get to. Uh, Carrie, what do we have in our hemp headlines today? Well, today I'm going to cover that uh, California crackdown. Uh, the feds are saying it wasn't us. Also, an expo that was supposed to happen in Washington State this weekend that got yanked from permits. And uh, we're going to go to one of the large medical associations that's calling for legalization. I'm going to tell you all about that, but I believe you have some breaking news. Oh, to yes. Up today. Speaking of legalization, the Gallup organization just announced Gallup poll for the first time in American history. 50% of Americans support the legalization of marijuana. 50%. It's 50% for, 46% against. The first time there's been more Americans in a Gallup poll who have supported legalization than have supported keeping the drug war the way it is. We're going to get to that and more of the details of that in our hemp headlines right after this first break. Also on today's show, we have got lots of stuff to bring to you. We've got a Roots Monday tune, a little bit of Latin music for you, Amor y Marijuana. Good stuff there. Adam Assenberg joins us from Washington State to talk about his case up there, uh, trying to get Washington State to deal with dispensaries fairly all the way across the state. And then at the end of the show, news from the Medical Cannabis Cup in Detroit this weekend, where police shut down the medication tent and harassed a lot of the vendors there. We're going to speak to Matt Abel, attorney Matt Abel from the Normal Legal Committee, along with Brandy Zink and Veterans for Medical Marijuana's Michael Kravitz joins us to talk about his petition that's going in front of President Obama. It's jam-packed today. Stay tuned. It's Normal Show Live. This is Normal Show Live, the voice of the marijuana nation. The law offices of Omar Figueroa would like to remind you to stand up for your rights. Please do not give up your precious liberties. 
There's nothing wrong with standing up for our constitutional rights, and in fact, it's the only way to honor the Constitution that gives us these precious rights. Treat law enforcement with respect and respect the Constitution by standing up for your rights. If you are detained or arrested, stand up for your rights by repeating, I respectfully invoke all of my legal and constitutional rights. I do not consent to any search or seizure. I want to remain silent, and I want to speak with my attorney, Omar Figueroa. Omar Figueroa has more than a decade of experience in federal and California courts and graduated from Yale University, Stanford Law School, and Trial Lawyers College. Please contact the law offices of Omar Figueroa at 415-489-0420 or 707-829-0215 or on the web at www.omarfigueroa.com. Hey, you're podcasting on Stick Cab, right? Right on. Big up to the people at Stick Cab. I probably be really... TV, Re Real TV, TV. Cap. So big up to everybody watching for this page. I, I know your show. I support you. Remember that. Y'all watch that show too because the more informed you can be about this whole movement, the better. Because we got, it takes all of us to, to, to have this knowledge to be able to use it to obtain that legalization. We can get it. But Weedmaps.com. I'm Radical Russ from Normal. In my job as outreach coordinator, I travel every month, and when I'm on the road, I need a fast, accurate way to find the medical marijuana dispensaries in the area. So I turn to Weedmaps.com. Weedmaps.com has the best dispensary locator online or on your mobile device. Search by zip code or let Weedmaps find you, and in seconds, you'll have the addresses, phone numbers, and customer service reviews for the medical marijuana dispensaries in the local area. Weedmaps.com also has a section devoted to helping you find a doctor who understands and recommends medical marijuana under your state's law. You can even check prices on the Medical Marijuana Stock Exchange. Coming soon, you'll even be able to find the listings of normal attorneys and chapters, local head shops and grow shops, and the best weed-friendly businesses. Weedmaps.com has the information you need to be an informed cannabis consumer. Visit Weedmaps.com today, a proud sponsor of the Normal Network. Inhaling deeply of the sacred smoke. Medical marijuana, industrial hemp, consumer cannabis. It's time for this week's Normal News with Cannabis Carry. The crackdown on medical marijuana dispensaries last week that came by way of letters sent out by four U.S. attorneys in California is making news again this week. A spokesman for the California-based U.S. attorney, Andre Barot, said the decision was not from Washington or from the Obama administration, but by a collective decision by the four federal attorneys based in California. The four federal prosecutors sent out letters to shop owners last week telling them that they would shut down state-licensed dispensaries and seize property from property owners and landlords that have medical marijuana marijuana dispensaries located on their premises. They sent letters to three dispensaries in San Francisco even that were a thousand feet within school zones and other public spaces, citing the increased federal penalties for drug activity within a thousand feet of a school, even though those stores were exempt under a grandfathering system by the city. The dispensaries and collectives in California and elsewhere felt they had some kind of impunity due to the Obama administration by way of U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder promising to maintain a hands-off approach back in 2009. He said in October of that year that the federal government would not spend any resources going after medical marijuana patients that were following state law. The spokesman for U.S. Attorney Andrew Barot also said that there were was no one incident that prompted the crackdown or the enforcement actions. The attorneys contend that it is the significant increase in the problem of medical marijuana in the last few years. I have to assume by problem they mean expanding industry. The attorney said the initial warnings were sent to areas where local officials have taken steps to rid their towns of medical marijuana businesses and said their office will be busy working with local municipalities and local law enforcement to insist in ongoing efforts to combat commercial marijuana operations. Federal prosecutors have also suggested the industry has been hijacked by pot profiteers. Here's a statement from Tom Morzek, a spokesman for Andre Barot, quote, All the evidence indicates that the marijuana stores in California are for-profit enterprises, which is one reason why we're using term stores for these operations. I'm not saying that there are no true nonprofit collectives involving only patients and their primary caregivers that are operating stores. There might just be, but we have not seen one yet. This statement is based on numerous federal investigations as well as numerous investigations and prosecutions by local officials throughout the state. 
Now, the IRS, another federal branch, has also been working hard against medical marijuana industries. They ruled that a medical marijuana business cannot deduct business expenses that are the backbone of the business enterprises in the American economy. Harborside Health Center, the largest dispensary in California, is being asked to pay $2.5 million in back taxes. Okay, so apparently these U.S. attorneys are acting on their own. So much for the Obama administration. So much for President Obama being the boss here or Attorney General Holder having any control over what his rogue, renegade U.S. attorneys are doing here. Uh, what's the policy here? Does the policy come from the top? Where does the buck stop? It, it, these guys, these attorneys in California are just allowed to disregard all of the previous campaign promises of their boss, all of the previous pronouncements of their boss at the Department of Justice. This. this is the way the, the federal system works now. This is the way Obama is going to uh, maintain order uh, in his administration. Uh, seems to me like somebody needs to take control here and decide what exactly the federal policy is. Sounds a lot like, you know, passing the buck, a lot like protecting Obama in an election year, a 2012 election year, where he could be vulnerable in California for maybe the first time ever because of these actions. People don't take kindly to disregarding states' rights on this issue, disregarding the people in in general when it comes to this issue. There's 75% support nationwide for medical marijuana. President Obama, get control of your people. The first... <laughs> there we go. The first medical marijuana expo in Washington State's Yakima Valley was supposed to take place this weekend, but it was shut down early on Saturday morning by the Yakima County Sheriff's Department, apparently in a misstep in filing an event permit with the county. Organizers of the event that were to be held on the outskirts of town were told that their paperwork had not been approved by the county fire marshal since there had been no on-site inspection from them. William Smith, one of the organizers, said that they thought they had done everything by the book and had many meetings with the city clerk to file the permits and no one ever told them that they needed an on-site fire marshal inspection. They said that they would have people come into the house or they said they could have people come into the house that was located on the property and belongs to the f a family member of Mr. Smith as long as the gatherings was kept small and out of sight. Organizers had to make hurried calls to vendors who were arriving to set up. Sheriff Ken Irwin went as far as to say that they had notified the local office of the DEA about the event and told them that they would, quote, support any action they cared to take at the event, unquote. Yakima is one of the Washington cities that have imposed a temporary ban on medical marijuana collective gardens. The event ended up being a small gathering of 30 to 50 people, mostly organizers and some vendors that stuck around, that ended up having more of a neighborhood potluck than a large medical marijuana expo. William Smith says that he will continue to seek a permit from the county to hold a larger event like the one originally planned. Sheriff Irwin, it seems, will try to keep that from happening. He told a reporter that he does not think it is an appropriate function and that it violates federal law. <sighs> when are we going to finally get these local officials that realize that enforcing federal law is not their job? Enforcing local laws, enforcing state laws is their job. They need to understand this. This is the way our federal system is supposed to work. Uh, what they're doing here is they're taking the easy out. They're taking the opportunity to use the federal law as a cover for doing something that they know that is unpopular locally. Let's get these guys back to enforcing local laws. And, and remember, a lot of these sheriffs, they have to run for election. Remember this one? When it comes around to election time and, and hold these candidates' feet to the fire as far as are they going to support the local and state laws or are they going to uh, disobey what the people want and, and use the federal law as cover? The largest industry group for doctors in the state of California is calling for the legalization of marijuana. The California Medical Association adopted the new stance at their annual meeting on Friday in Anaheim, even though the group maintains that cannabis has few proven health benefits. A Sacramento physician, Dr. Donald Lyman, wrote the new policy and said that doctors are increasingly frustrated by the state's medical marijuana law. The law relies on doctors to recommend marijuana as a treatment, and the group says it puts physicians in the uncomfortable position of recommending a substance that is illegal under federal law. Dr. Lyman says that the open question is if cannabis is useful or not medically. He says he feels that that can only be answered once it's legalized and researched is allowed to be done. The federal government maintains that there is no medical use for marijuana. The California Medical Association acknowledges the health risks that can come from using marijuana, but says that the consequences of criminalization far outweigh the dangers. The CMA is hoping the federal government reclassifies marijuana to help promote further research into the possible medical benefits. 
Earlier this year, the Obama administration turned down a request to reclassify marijuana. Legalization advocates are appealing that decision. The CMA represents 35,000 California doctors, and it is the first major medical association to advise full-out legalization of cannabis. Of course, law enforcement took only a matter of hours to issue a response to the endorsement. John Lovell, a spokesperson for the California Police Chiefs Association, called the group's decision to call for legalization unbelievably irresponsible due to the physiological impacts of marijuana, the way it affects young brains, and the number of accidents associated with driving under the influence of cannabis. Wow, it's great that the uh, California Medical Association has come out for marijuana legalization. You know, this is is good that the medical uh, organizations realize that there is a public health risk to the prohibition itself. Uh, We're not saying that marijuana is harmless. Uh, People that tell you marijuana is harmless, uh, you know, are fooling themselves and trying to fool you because anything that you ingest into your body has some potential for harm. And and marijuana is not unique among, among substances that way. It's far less potential for harm than uh, most of the other uh, substances that people take for recreational or medical purposes, uh, alcohol, tobacco, prescription drugs, etc., but it is not harmless. However, the prohibition for marijuana is demonstrably more harmful to the user than the use of marijuana itself. It's good that the California Medical uh, Association has finally realized that, something that uh, President Carter said uh, some 30, 35 years ago when he said that the penalties for the possession and use of a drug should not be more harmful to the individual than the use of the drug itself. All right, folks, I am so happy to bring you this next news. I've been uh, hinting at it for the past couple of days, but it just broke (laughs) literally five minutes before I went on air today. The Gallup Poll, uh, the legendary Gallup polling organization, well-respected, for the first time in asking since 1969, has shown that a majority of Americans believe that marijuana should be legalized nationwide. That's right. In the 42-year history of asking the same exact question, should marijuana be legalized, uh, they have reported that 50% of respondents nationwide uh, support legalization, and that represents the first time that support has ever outweighed opposition. Only 46% of Americans nationwide believe marijuana should remain criminalized with 4% undecided. Support for marijuana legalization remains greatest in the Western states with 55% support in the West, but in an amazing statistic, this blows me away. I thought the East would be the next highest level, but no, the Midwest, the Midwest has come out with 54% for marijuana legalization, followed by the Eastern states at 51%. Only voters in the South still oppose marijuana legalization. Only 44% support in the South. Now, another feature of this Gallup poll, this is something I've been commenting on uh, since I started uh, in marijuana reform since 2005, is is the gender gap in marijuana legalization. Men support legalization in this latest Gallup poll 55%, women 46%. That's pretty much unchanged throughout the past uh, five years in polling where there's been this 10 nine or ten point gap between men's and women's support for marijuana legalization. We need to do more to get women on the side of legalization. And I believe part of this has to do with the demographics of marijuana smoking. Men outnumber women as regular marijuana smokers. That is defined as smoking at least once per year by about a ten point gap. It's about 55 to 45 percent. And when you get to daily tokers, it's 68 percent to 32 percent. So men clearly have a great stake because there's more men in danger of getting locked up. That means we need to bring women onto the side of marijuana legalization. Now, support is greatest for legalization among the younger Americans, 18 to 29, 62% support. Among Democrats, 57% support. And people describing themselves as liberal, 69% support. Now, we have one third of jurisdictions in the United States. If you count D.C. and the 50 states, that's 51 jurisdictions We've got 16 states plus D.C. that support medical marijuana, one-third of the United States jurisdictions. Yet the federal government is continuing this full court press against these jurisdictions in their attempt to kill the burgeoning medical marijuana industry. This despite the Gallup 
most recent poll in 2003 that asked about medical marijuana specifically and found 75% support nationwide. One might think that this escalation in the war on certain American citizens using non-pharmaceutical, non-alcoholic, tobacco-free drugs is designed to hamstring the state initiatives to legalize marijuana in those states in 2012 by cutting the purse strings of the medical marijuana movement. When three quarters of Americans support legalizing medical use, half of Americans support outright legalization of all cannabis use, and one third of the states are openly defying federal prohibition, the federal retribution in service of the status quo is inevitable. The question is, what will you do to push the legislation over the tipping point? Register to vote? Contact your legislatures? Join your local normal chapter? Contribute to national normal? Get educated on the issues? Join together with like-minded women? Reach out to seniors? Follow the latest medical marijuana news, the latest marijuana news? Learn from the experts? Join us here every day as we continue this fight to legalize marijuana today! Woo! It's a great day to be a legalizer. The wind is at our back. Keep pushing. We're going to do it. Be right back with your Daily Toker Tunes. It's 20 after the hour, and we have to take a short break, if you know what I mean. Please support these sponsors who support Normal Show Live. Oh, have you ever met that funny repo man? A repo man. Have you ever met that funny reefer man, reefer man? If he said he swam to China, he would send you South Carolina. Then you know you're talking to that reefer man. In today's busy world, we're inundated by advertising for all types of pharmaceuticals that come with a laundry list of potential side effects. Shouldn't you have better medical choices? Natural alternatives to pills pushed by Big Pharma? At Alternative Medical Choices, you could choose natural, safe, and effective alternative therapies that are right for your budget without nasty side effects. Cannabis, or marijuana, has been a legal medicine in the Pacific Northwest since 1998. Our doctors will help determine your qualifications for a medical marijuana recommendation in Oregon, no matter where you live. Our massage therapists will ease your aches and stress with soothing hemp seed oil or cannabis-infused massage salves. We also offer acupuncture, Reiki, and other alternative health therapies. Call Alternative Medical Choices in Portland, Oregon at 503-288-5579 or visit our website at www.altmedchoices.com. We specialize in out-of-state recommendations. That's www.altmedchoices.com or call 503-288-5579. Hey, hey, hey you, I saw that. Don't go teasing us all if you're not going to share. Tokers, there's no good reason to get your dog stoned. While it might not harm them physically, imagine being a dog who already begs for treats all day, and then imagine that dog having the munchies. Not... It's time for your Daily Toker Tunes, the best in 420-friendly music from all genres that uplifts, entertains, and informs the public. Today we bring you tunes for Roots Monday, our celebration of the music that evolved into the popular modern music of today. We pick the best of blues, country, folk, and jazz with a 420 feel and serve it up for you every Monday. If you'd like to submit your song to be played on Normal Show Live, send it to us at stash at normal.org. Now here's some more great independent marijuana music for today's Daily Toker Tunes. All right, folks, I, I got to tell you the truth on this one. I don't know a whole lot about the artist performing this song. Uh, just something that I looked up uh, during the uh, during the breaks here. But before we get to that, and, and, and excuse me for uh, typing while I talk here, but uh, Jesus Angel Martinez uh, Cutias is the artist for today's song. And the song is called Amor y Marijuana. And it's something that I pulled off of archive.org. If you haven't checked out archive.org, uh, you got to do that sometimes. All sorts of great old tunes there, great old uh, information, and uh, uh, archives of old websites. If you ever need to look up uh, what a, a website looked like years ago, uh, you can find that uh, at archive.org. Uh, but before we get to that, I have a 
unfortunate news uh, to deliver here uh, from our normal show live family. And I want folks, uh, if you know of our great intern, uh, Coleco the intern, AKA Wiz Coleco, uh, has unfortunately uh, lost his grandfather this weekend in a tragic accident. And I know he's he's uh, hurting out there and he's holding up a lot of burdens for his family. You know, uh, he's the most mature 24 year old I've ever met in my life, uh, you know, totally uh, taking care of his grandma and his mom and his whole family, uh, a better man you couldn't meet. And so I want to encourage everyone to send out well wishes and thoughts to uh, our own Wiz Coleco. You can find him on Twitter at Wiz Coleco, K-A-L-I-K-O, and let him know that you're thinking about him and you support him in this uh, time of tragedy that he's facing, unfortunately, uh, with the uh, accidental, just a, a tragic accident, and he lost his grandfather this weekend. So, uh, our thoughts go out to Wiz Coleco, and we hope you're holding up well, and um, and we miss you. We uh, we hope everything is going well for you. All right, let's get to our Roots Monday music. This is Amor y Marijuana with Jesus Diaz. En el misterio de las cosas Todas las razones Todas las opciones Todas pero algunas resultan hermosas Dependiendo de cada quien Un abecedario de distintas causas Evidentemente Diferentes mentes Pero cada ritmo sabe de unas pausas Que le hacen mucho bien Tú solo necesitas Sentir en tu boquita la fértil mezcla de sensualidad que es amor y marihuana, amor y marihuana, amor y marihuana y va genial amor y marihuana, amor y marihuana, amor y marihuana para barato amor y marihuana, amor y marihuana Vamos a encender un cirio en los altares de san escéptico, de san agnóstico, porque la cosecha de los mil lugares, de por cien mil placer, para que nunca falten ni el arte ni la parte, que todos se puedan enriquecer. Con amor y marihuana, amor y marihuana, amor y marihuana, y la genial amor. Y marihuana, amor y marihuana, amor y marihuana. Para para amor, marihuana, amor y marihuana, amor y marihuana.
You want a copy of that song for your iPod? Check out the Daily Toker Tunes at the Stash blog by surfing to stash.normal.org and choosing Media and then Toker Tunes from the main menu. The fact is today, people don't go to jail for possession of marijuana. I know you like to pretend it does and there's a lot of misinformation about that, but um, finding somebody in jail or prison for a first-time nonviolent offender for possession of marijuana is like finding a unicorn. You find one, you will make a big story because it doesn't exist. Finding somebody in jail or prison for a first-time nonviolent offender for possession of marijuana is like finding a unicorn, finding a unicorn, finding a unicorn. Narl Show Live, the National Wildlife Refuge for Marijuana Unicorns. I'm gonna light me a pipe of inspiration. I'm gonna blow away some holes on my head. I'm gonna leave this plastic place. Marijuana and alcohol are the two most popular recreational drugs in America. Marijuana smoking is non-toxic, relatively safe, and has a low risk of dependence. Alcohol drinking is potentially fatal, dangerous to society, and is quite addictive. Marijuana is safer, so why are we driving people to drink? That's the question of the new book, Marijuana is Safer, So Why Are We Driving People to Drink? by Paul Armentano, Mason Tvert, and Steve Fox. Visit Amazon.com or ChelseaGreen.com today to order your copy of Marijuana is Safer or visit MarijuanaIsSafer.com. Hi, I'm Keith Straub, the founder of Normal. In all the years since 1970 that I've been fighting marijuana prohibition, I've learned that drug warriors love to confuse the public with statistics. Lately, they, they've claimed that there are more teens enrolled in drug treatment for marijuana than ever before. It's a statement that, while true, is intentionally misleading. What they don't tell you is that marijuana arrests have skyrocketed to over 800,000 arrests per year. They also don't tell you that we've gone from a few dozen drug courts in the 1990s to over 2,500 drug courts today. The kicker is that those drug courts sentence teens routinely to drug treatment for marijuana whether they need drug treatment or not. So they arrest more people for pot, require them to enter drug treatment, then claim the higher treatment numbers justify more pot arrests. It's an absurd proposition, but no more absurd than banning a plant. Learn the facts about pot. Visit NORML.org today. The most devastating effect of the war on marijuana is that it is a war on everyday people like you and me. All week, we speak to the doctors, scientists, celebrities, and politicians who make up the professionals fighting for cannabis liberty. But we never forget about the tens of millions who use cannabis, the millions who need medical access to cannabis, and the hundreds of thousands arrested every year for cannabis, and the tens of thousands imprisoned under our marijuana laws. At Normal, we are the Cannabis Consumers Lobby, and we take this opportunity to share the experience of our cannabis community. All right, uh, joining us today, we have a uh, dispensary owner from Washington State. Adam Assenberg is joining us by telephone. Adam, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, glad to have you here. And uh, we heard about your story because of what's going on in Washington State. And we've been reporting on uh, the situation there. Uh, originally, the there was a bill to create a dispensary system, but the governor line item vetoed most of that uh, dispensary language. And now uh, the city of Seattle has kind of uh, gone against her wishes and come up with regulations. And I guess that's where your case comes in here. Tell our listeners a little bit of background on how your dispensary has started and, and, and what legal uh, things are up with you now? Okay, well, it basically started over the fact that I used to be a guard in 85 and broke my back in nine places. And back in 2004, when my mom passed away from colon cancer, I need cannabis because with C7 blocking spinal fluid up in my neck, I go through up to 70 grand mal seizures a day. At least it looks like a grand mal seizure, but what it feels like is someone pouring gasoline on me and lighting me on fire. And so 
in 2004, everyone required the almighty green dollar in order to get me my green medicine that I need in order to stop the seizures from taking place. I took a steak knife to my heart four times to end my suffering. Came out of all of that to meet this wonderful lady and her two children. And the Annette Quarters Housing Authority threw us out of our home and out onto the street where we had to live in a tent for a month. So I did all kinds of research on how I could fight back with the justice system and discovered a major flaw in federal law that actually protects dispensary owners, those dispensing this wonderful plant to patients. And I decided to open up a business in January and be very blunt about what I was doing so I w- could possibly get arrested. All right, let's let, let's let's, let's uh, what is this uh, what is this flaw in the federal law you're putting because we've been uh, telling stories all about, you know, the new federal crackdown on medical marijuana. They're going raids in all these different states. What flaw have you found in the federal law? Well, here's my idea. What I did was I got myself busted on purpose and so I could push it into federal court because I had discovered that on January 22nd, 2002, the U.S. Department of Congress in Washington, D.C. had rewritten the federal narcotic laws for the United States, and it is clearly stipulated in the federal code under Title 21, Section 812, subparagraph B as in boy, that for a drug to be a Schedule One narcotic, it could not have any current medical use and treatment within the boundaries of the United States. That's right. Yeah, that's and Schedule clearly, One drugs are said, you know, Schedule One drugs, they say no currently recognized medical value. That's true. Exactly, and nowhere in that federal stipulation does it specify that the FDA and the DEA have to be the sole regulatory authorities over that, and so my plan is to go ahead and bring in someone from the Federal Cancer Institute, as well as the Federal Veterans Administration, and have them testify as to how they allow patients to smoke it for medical benefits. And then we also just had the American Medical Association come on, well, the California Medical Association, excuse me, come on and say that they recommend it's rescheduling. So clearly, mm-hmm. I've got more than enough evidence for federal court to show that it has recognized medical value currently in the United States. Well, I, you know, a lot of people have brought this forward in petitions and trials. You know, a lot of organizations have tried this to say, hey, there's, you know, 16 medical marijuana states. Uh, federal government has a patent on cannabinoids. I mean, there's obviously medical uses. And to this point, it's been stymied. The federal government just says, la, 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 we can't hear you. It has no medical use. So what's different about your case that's going to make a change here? Well, one difference is because there, instead of it being a civil trial, this is a criminal trial where the jury has to follow the exact letter of the law as it is written. Okay. And in my argument, I'm arguing that the Department of Justice, the, FB, the DEA, and the National Institute of Drug Abuse have been violating congressional law because of what Congress stipulated has to meet the requirements of a Schedule One narcotic. Mm. So you got yourself busted in order to, to make this challenge in a criminal court to the federal law. Uh, what are you being charged with? What's the, what's the charge you're having to face? Well, it's quite interesting because the people that are doing this to me, Brett Myers, the sheriff, and Dennis Tracy, the prosecutor, decided to keep this out of federal court and just charge me at a state level. And they're charging me with four felonies, two for distributing to an undercover informant, Mm -hmm. and one for transporting and one for growing, although I just had an evidentiary hearing take place, and the judge told the prosecutor that I was protected under Washington state law, RCW 6951A.005, mm-hmm. dispensing it to patients, yeah. where the only question left is, did the confidential informant sign the paper, yes or no? Well, I'm, I guess I'm confused here because you were talking about federal prohibition here for a second, and now you're saying you're being charged in state court. So what does Federal Controlled Substance Act and the federal loophole you found have to do with being charged with state felonies? The, the way it works into it is because close to the end of my state trial, I'm going to go ahead and force them to take this into federal court where I can go ahead and use these federal arguments with the rest of my case. And the way I'm doing that is under another unknown federal code to a lot of people, and that's Federal Code 28, Section 1443 of the federal code, under this being the question of whether or not the government's been lying to the people. Okay, so uh, you're going to trial in state court. You were running a dispensary. Where was the dispensary located, by the way? 
The dispensary was located in Colfax, Washington, and I did a delivery service out of a 1976 ambulance. Now, Colfax, is that eastern part of Washington, western? That is in eastern Washington. Okay. And I forced the court to go ahead and recognize right away that they were violating congressional law under even Washington state law by even having the case under Article 12 of the Washington State Constitution where it stipulates you cannot give a special class of citizens an immunity you do not give to all citizens within the state. What what immunity is being given? I don't understand. Well, the day after I had my first arraignment hearing, they were having a marijuana farmer's market at the White Center Mall in Seattle where anyone with an authorization could go in and purchase medicine. And we have over 60 stores in downtown Seattle where you can go in with an authorization and purchase medicine if you're a patient. But anywhere else outside of King County, you're prosecuted and thrown in jail for the same rights that they give citizens in King County without fear of prosecution in King County. Okay, so the theory here is that people, King County residents, are getting a special immunity that other residents of the state don't get, and that violates the equality thing that you've got in the Washington State Constitution? Exactly, under okay. Article 12. So what's going to stop them from saying, okay, so that everyone is equal, we'll shut down the Washington, the King County dispensaries? Well, so far, there's enough people in Seattle that would put enough pressure onto the mayor for him reversing his decision on allowing this to take place mm -hmm. to where it would have too much political backlash right now for the people in charge. Okay. Adam, I have to wrap things up here, but before we do, I want to give people a chance to contact you or support you. Do you have a website or email or anything you want to give out? I would thank you very much for that. My website is marijuanafactorfiction.net, and my toll-free number is 888-812-0553. All right, and uh, just so we can give uh, proper respect to the folks that are helping you out, uh, what law office or attorneys are giving you this advice? Well, so far right now, I have a public pretender who is actually listening to the guidelines of law that I've discovered over four years of research. And on the civil lawsuit of $3.5 million, I have a gentleman by the name of Douglas Phelps out of Spokane who's doing this pro bono. All right, excellent. Glad to hear you're getting some help. Adam Asenberg in Washington State. Uh, good luck with everything you're doing out there, my man. Thank you. I'm doing it for all of us. All right. Been busted? Need a lawyer? Call the Normal Legal Committee for an attorney near you. Find one at norml.org. Remember, attorneys are cheaper than a lifelong criminal drug record. It's that freedom. Freedom. I'm free to do it. It's tough talking to kids about marijuana, especially if you might be a parent who dabbled a time or two in your youth. So to help you out, get your copy of Dr. Mitch Earlywine's latest book, A Parent's Guide to Marijuana. Dr. Earlywine is an associate professor of psychology at the State University of New York at Albany and an expert on the studies concerning marijuana, its effect on health and society, and the methodology behind the statistics. He is a frequent guest here on our daily audio stash. Dr. Earlywine lays it all out without the propaganda and scare tactics that parents know won't work with teenagers. He presents a rational understanding of cannabis, what it is and what it isn't, and why kids shouldn't be using marijuana. You can order today through Amazon.com or check our links at our blog, stash.normal.org. Hey, this is Sub Cool from Team Green Avenger Seeds, TGAgenetics.com, and you're listening to The Normal Network. This is Dean Becker, producer of the Drug Truth Network programs, Cultural Baggage and Century of Lies, which can be heard every Monday evening at 6 p.m., on the normal network our shows run the gamut from tommy chong to the u.n drug czar from medical marijuana to international barbaric cartels all in the hopes that you will do your part to end the madness of drug war are we just peasants in the field let's stand for truth or forever new every 16 seconds the slamming door and we owe it all to eternal war the first eternal war 
Starfish Designs, makers of the original Gandalf. I'm Radical Russ, and when I want to relax, I always have my 17-inch long original Gandalf from Starfish Designs nearby. The hand-blown borosilicate glass is strong and easy to clean, and the design is sleek and sophisticated. Starfish Designs are available from Bend, Oregon at a glass retailer near you. For locations, call 541-788-GLASS. That's 541-788-4527. Legalization. Decriminalization. Lowest law enforcement priority. Medical marijuana. Ganja sacrament. Consumer cannabis. Industrial hemp. The world of marijuana law reform involves many different aspects of cannabis that interact nearly every public policy discussion in America, including health care, the economy, global climate change, law enforcement and prisons, immigration, religion, free speech, energy policy, and war. Now, we take a look at how re-legalizing marijuana will change the world in our normal show live, Cannabis Conversations. Welcome back, everyone. As you heard on many advertisements here on Normal Show Live, High Times Magazine featured the Detroit Medical Cannabis Cup this last weekend, MedCan Cup Detroit, and apparently uh, did not uh, go down as well with the local law enforcement as it did in Denver or in San Francisco before it. So joining us by telephone to give us the breakdown on what happened is attorney Matt Abel. Uh, Matt, welcome to the show. Yeah. Hi, Matt. And also joining us is uh, Brandy Zink. Brandy, how are you? Great. Thank you, Russ. And also from Veterans for Medical Marijuana, Michael Kravitz is in the house. How are you doing, Michael? Doing fine, Russ. All right. Let's start off with uh, with Matt Abel. Apparently, what I had heard here, I got this from a couple of uh, texts and some other messages, is that uh, police were coming through regularly at the Medical Cannabis Cup in Detroit, and they shut down the medication tent. Can you give us more details? Yeah, they sure did. What happened was there was a press release that went out apparently on Friday that uh, highlighted, the, well, that mentioned the medication tent, and uh, the police were there Friday night talking with the owner of the bar, um, had a copy of the press release, and had written in over the word medication area, illegal medication area. Huh. Um, so that was already a controversy on Friday. And it seems uh, the issue is that in Michigan, the law says you cannot smoke in public, and um, the owner of the establishment had made a private area outside. Um, but the, the, the fly in the ointment was the fact that he had a liquor license. So the police said, well, we're here on the auspice, under the auspices of um, ensuring that you're complying with all of the um, liquor codes, and one of those is that there not be any illegal narcotics. And again, because marijuana is federally illegal, they were hanging their hat on that. So oh, uh, Bobby Black commented. He said, "It's this is the first cannabis cup I've ever been to where there was no smoking." Yeah, that, that's a shame. Okay, so uh, hooking that to the to the liquor laws. There were there any other uh, instances where uh, police were involved there with the vendors or anything? Yeah, there was um, one paraphernalia ticket written. Uh, the city of Detroit has a paraphernalia ordinance where it's illegal to possess uh, narcotics paraphernalia, as that is so determined. And um, anyway, so uh, we explained to the police that, um, you know, it was legal under the Michigan medical marijuana law. He went and made a, a call to his supervisor and uh, came back and said, well, okay, but... If anybody who's in possession of marijuana, um, anybody who buys a piece of marijuana, if they're not a medical marijuana patient, we're going to write them a ticket for possession of paraphernalia. So, um, and he actually said, you know, we're not going to challenge the seller, but uh, just the buyer, we're going to write them a ticket. So he had already written one ticket um, at that point to a vendor, the uh, Incredible, who actually yeah. won first place for best new device at this event. Um, Again. <laughs> hey, it's Michigan, sorry. So, um, you know, we're, we're catching up. But the Incredible, it's a good device anyway. So, oh, yeah. um, But they got a ticket, and uh, apparently the person there has an out-of-state recommendation. And so um, we are pretty sure that when that's presented to the police that uh, the ticket's going to get... Um, 
dismissed. Right. All right. Let's go to uh, Brandy Zink uh, on the phone as well, because I talked to you earlier today. You said you were there as well and saw some of these things going down. What can you add to uh, the events that happened there on uh, Saturday and Sunday? I think the police presence was planned um, from higher up. I think the Detroit police I, I spoke to said that they didn't really want to be there. They they would rather not be there, and they're just following orders. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we were able to talk with the police. Uh, a lot of activists tried to educate the police, and I really applaud the community for standing up to protect the, the vendors and the patients. And um, I saw one medical marijuana certification clinic that also has other services they offer for patients, you know, with information and and. Uh, offering equipment with medical supplies, you know, such as the papers, grinders, pipes, etc. And they were, um, the police were uh, very intimidating towards them, and um, those people were really uh, courageous, I think, to stand up to the police. They knew their rights, and they were respectful, and um, the, the police tried, but they they didn't succeed in intimidating us. Mm, that's excellent. And uh, I guess we also need to know, was RoboCop there? <laughs> no RoboCop. There okay. was a big pink gorilla. <laughs> well, okay, I guess that'll have to do. Peter Weller has got uh, really scraping the bottom of the barrel for gigs now, isn't he? Uh, all right. Uh, I'm building a RoboCop statue in Detroit, though. Oh, oh really? Oh, yeah. Just so you know. <laughs> and, uh, all right, so uh, let me go to uh, Michael Kravitz, who's on the line. And, uh, Michael, uh, were you there at the event this weekend as well? Yes, I was. Yeah, any any stories of uh, cop harassment going on? Well, I, I would just say that I've, I've only been to a couple of events like this, and it sure didn't seem to me like this event was in any way hampered by the police presence. In fact, I was uh, talking with some people, and we were joking that when the police showed up, when they walked around, it almost looked like uh, they were uh, outside uh, influence being uh, attacked by anybody. You know, mm-hmm. they were following around with a cluster of people. Uh, no matter where they went in the venue, hmm. uh, like they were, uh, you know, uh, being escorted by white blood cells <laughs> to a safe <laughs> distance, attacking the infection, huh? <laughs> yeah, and and uh, the the event I think was pretty much unscathed. It, it was it was a good event. All right. Do you have any uh, results from the event? Any of the uh, highlights you can give us? Well, Captain Kirk's Cheesecake won Best Edible, we know that. I, I, I gave out an award for a high CBD strain that uh, maxed out at uh, 12.3% wow. in their testing, but the people that were receiving the award uh, talked about some of the samples going as high as 20-something percent CBD, yeah. which I'm sure will show up on the uh, Project CBD website. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty amazing. There's some amazing numbers. We're speaking with uh, Matt Abel, Brandy Zink, and Michael Kravitz uh, from Detroit, Michigan, and the uh, Medical Cannabis Cup just took place this weekend, High Times Medical Cannabis Cup. Uh, lots of law enforcement uh, taking a look at that, but it sounds like things went went okay. Um, let me come back to Michael for a second because I know uh, you're active with uh, Veterans for Medical Marijuana. We got to meet in March back in uh, Columbia, Missouri and talked a whole lot about that. And you wanted to mention a petition that you've got going forward on uh, to the White House. So let's get that. Well, what we've got going on in, uh, in the national scene is we've got uh, multi, uh, you know, I keep saying that uh, wrong, MAPS, uh, Rick Doblin's organization. Right. Uh, has a study that's already been approved by FDA to study uh, veterans' use of cannabis on post-traumatic stress, and of course, it's being held up by the you know the DEA slash NIDA uh, you know authorities, and that's just unprecedented for drug research. It's only marijuana that you see these ex- uh, you know, extra roadblocks set in our way. So we've got a petition that we put up on the White House, uh, We the People site that they've set up, Mm -hmm. where we need 5,000 signatures, and this will be presented to the president uh, and the president's staff uh, directly, this issue of uh, uh, cannabis for vets for post-traumatic stress. It can be found at the uh, wh.gov website, whitehouse.gov, slash 4XD, and that will bring them right to the petition if you want to take a look at that. really could use everyone's help out there to get this petition over the threshold so that it gets presented to the White House staff. Yes, yes. Let's get that taken care of. Uh, look for that petition for uh, veterans. And, and also, what's the website for Veterans for Medical Marijuana? Yeah, it's veteransformedicalmarijuana.org uh, or veteransformedicalcannabis.org. Um, very, if you have trouble finding it, it's easy to find on Google. Just type in veterans and cannabis, and it brings us right up. 
But uh, we're out there trying to, you know, coordinate with the federal government to get these policies changed so that we have the ability to start talking about research. Until we got a policy set last year uh, at the VA to uh, allow for the discussion to start on medical cannabis, it was a brick wall at the very beginning. So we're just now beginning the dialogue with the VA on these issues. Now, we've gotten some, we've, we've told some news about the VA uh, and their uh, change in stance on the use of medical marijuana by veterans who are on pain contracts. Can you tell us what happened and is there any updates on that? Well, what it is, is it's a clarification of really what was already the standards of medical practice. I mean, there's nothing in the standards of medical practice that says that a doctor is supposed to cut off a pain patient because they use marijuana. That's a, a rule that is a kind of an imaginary rule that doctors have come up with. I say imaginary because they had me chasing down the rule for a long time just to find out it didn't exist. And that was formative in us getting the policy set at the VA, which now is the first medical marijuana policy. Even though 1996 we've had laws uh, for medical marijuana in the states, this policy at the VA is the first attempt by the federal government in any way to acknowledge that, 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 it, that that's happened. And the fact that the VA has put this in writing that not just uh, pain management, but any treatment that you receive at the VA hospital should not be disturbed just because you're using uh, cannabis per state law. Uh, that shouldn't be taken against you administratively. It may be considered medically you know, appropriate uh, or, or inappropriate, but that's for the doctor to decide based on medical training and science, not based on politics or, or law enforcement. Mm. Now, do you fear that this recent uh, Obama administration federal crackdown on medical marijuana uh, through the various agencies, you know, ATF, uh, DEA, NIDA, the, the U.S. attorneys out in California, do you fear that this may spill over to the VA and you get some uh, more draconian treatment of medical marijuana, or do things look good for the immediate future with the VA? Well, the VA doesn't uh, operate in isolation, so uh, you know, obviously if that kind of hostility is going on out there, it's going to be felt by the vets, if, and if and for no other reason than you know, the people at the VA that run the VA read the paper. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing is that the VA has a different charter than the DEA. You know, the DEA is supposed to be getting people to recognize the harms from drugs, even if they have to create the, you know, the harm. <laughs> and yeah. the, the, the VA is out there with a different mandate. Their mandate is to treat the veterans' medical conditions and try to find the best medical outcome for the vets. That's the only reason we could get the policy set in the first place. And the reason why the VA was the only federal agency to ever acknowledge in any way that the state laws exist. Uh, is because of that charter. So having said that, we're working with the VA at the highest levels on the next thing, which is to reform the pain contract in general for all vets so that you know, ma marijuana, that's where it really pops up the most is on that pain contract because mm -hmm. right there it says if you use marijuana, we cut you off. Right, <laughs> and that's right. pretty straightforward. So we get that taken out uh, for all the vets, and then we can go from there. Uh, you know, getting it in the pharmacy at the VA is another nut to crack. But mm -hmm. uh, I think that the VA is uh, open to discussion now, and we're we're talking with them, and hopefully we can you know come to agreement on something that's best for the vets as we move forward. Yeah, let's hope so. Now, uh, Brandy Zink, as we wind up this hour, do you have uh, any contact information, resources for Michigan that we should let our uh, listeners know about? Oh yes, absolutely. You should definitely join Michigan Normal and um, National Normal, of course. Uh, Michigan Normal's website is m i n o r m l dot org. M i normal dot org. There's uh, Americans for Safe Access has a chapter here as well, growing in Michigan, and uh, that's Safe Access Now dot org. There's um, the Michigan Medical Marijuana Association. There's a Michigan Association of Compassion Centers. There's all kinds of great activism going on in Michigan, and uh, the various groups right now are working on a coalition, an alliance for safe access 2012, where we're going to be focusing on protecting our law in the state house and uh, working with our legislators to try to introduce some legislation that actually addresses patient needs, because there's a you know, there's something like 18 different bills that have been introduced in the Michigan legislature that are trying to limit or somehow restrict or, or control the medical marijuana law. So we need to be able to offer them uh, an alternative coming from patients.
point of view. And so I'm thrilled to, to, to be here in Michigan. It's a very exciting time. Detroit is a is, um, wonderful place to be, too. I'm thrilled that, that High Times came to, to bring the Cannabis Cup here. And uh, Michigan, we are pursuing, uh, we're moving forward and we're pursuing our, our rights, um, you know, aggressively and to protect them. All right. Thank you, Brandy Zink, Matt Abel, and Michael Kravitz for joining us. If you will, uh, stay tuned for Hour 2. You want to stay on the line with us? We'll take some calls. Uh, sure, Russ. All right, just a little bit of time. We'll be right back uh, taking calls in our second hour. For those of you listening on the podcast, thanks for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow with more news and interviews you can use for the cannabis community. For Cannabis Carry, I'm Radical Russ. Until next time, take care of each other, tokers. This is Normal Show Live, the voice of the marijuana nation.